The year is 1943. You're a Norwegian man who's really getting sick and tired of being occupied. The Germans have come in and absolutely ruined the country that you called home, and you feel a need to do something to get them out of your country. So you do what thousands of Europeans were doing at the time under occupation, and you try to find a resistance movement. And you happen to find one, supported by the British Special Operations Services, no less. And you decide that you're gonna dedicate your life to that. But that would be the second biggest adventure you ever embark on, because your tale of survival and what happens during one of these missions is way more insane than you could ever imagine. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. I've been on a huge kick of watching like crazy survival stories recently and I just really felt like making a video talking about them. It's similar to a story time. It's literally stories and I just wanted to try something different. If you guys like this and you want to see more of them, let me know by liking and commenting. Like I said, a little different than normal, but I figured you guys would enjoy it either way. And uh, yeah, I've got some just insane survival stories for you guys today. So uh, without further ado, let's just hop right into it. Here's the comment of the day from the last video. So the person that I was talking about in the intro is a real person. His name was Jan, and he's an absolute G who did quite a bit to fight for the independence of Norway while they were under German occupation. And he felt a need to protect his country. He felt a need to get the Germans out of there because it was just not their country and being occupied would absolutely suck. You're also occupied by some of the most evil people to have ever walked the earth, so he wanted to do something about it and he joins this super secret special operations civilian branch sort of thing of Norwegian commandos that were doing sabotage missions on the Germans and I say weird special operations civilian commando thing because technically Norway was occupied but the British special operations services had set up this thing where they were taking some of these commandos over to Scotland training them up basically turning them into you know old versions of Navy SEALs but cooler and then sending them back to cause mischief for the Germans and so he goes and gets this training and comes back and they're doing missions trying to do as much as possible to delay the Germans from doing whatever it is that they're trying to do in one night in March of 1943 him and three other commandos and a group of some just Norwegian citizens decide that they're going to go do a huge sabotage mission on an airbase nearby with a crap ton of explosives and obviously that's some very cool special operations high-speed operator stuff very sick to get to go you you know blow up the enemy air base with eight tons of explosives on like a ninja secret mission but for whatever reason before embarking on this secret mission the whole point is to be a secret one of the individuals the commandos decides to make contact with the local member of the resistance and kind of let them know what was up and let them know that they were going to be taking that out the only problem was he thought he had called just a normal resistance member so he's talking freely yo man we're gonna blow up this air base it's gonna be awesome well he had accidentally contacted some someone in that town that was the same name. So he's not talking to someone in the resistance, he's just talking to a normal person. And that person decides that they're going to report it because they don't want to be involved in knowing about the secret operation to blow up the airbase before it goes down. But he reports it to the German secret police. And so very quickly, the 12 men that are on this mission from the Norwegian side realize that this is not going to work. The police are on to them, like they're being searched for now. They got to get out of there. So they try to escape and they get onto this fishing boat that they had had with them that was going to take them to and from the mission. And they start trying to get out of there as fast as possible. And keep in mind, there's a ton of explosives on this boat. They were coming to blow up an airbase. This wasn't like a baby amount of C4 or whatever. There was uh, a little over eight tons of explosives just jam-packed into this ship. So they're trying to get out of there as fast as possible, but they're weighed down by the heavy load of this explosives. And on top of that, the Germans are onto them. And unfortunately for them, as they're trying to make this break and get out of this, this little bay that they had pulled into, a German boat comes in and intercepts them. And so they're being intercepted by this German boat and everyone's up on deck and they're kind of realizing that they're screwed, they're going to be captured, and then not only are the Germans going to have all the members of this commando squad and eight other resistance fighters, they're going to have all these explosives, they're going to have the ship, they're going to interrogate them, they're going to be tortured, their families are going to suffer. And so they're kind of thinking about, like, what can we do to possibly get out of this situation? And they decide very bravely that instead of being captured, 
they're going to blow up the boat and try to take out the German boat that's intercepting them, and then that way, none of the information, none of the explosives falls into enemy hands. And this wasn't trying to be like a suicide mission, they were still going to try to escape, they were going to light like a fuse, so that way it didn't blow up immediately and then try to get out on a dinghy or something. And so they set up this fuse and start trying to like get into this escape boat to try to get out of there before the boat explodes, hoping that the Germans don't see them escaping in time. But unfortunately, yet again, just a string of bad luck, the Germans kind of realize, hey, wait a second, they're scrambling to get in the lifeboat, they're trying to get out of here, and at that point, they didn't want to let these saboteurs, who were about to go blow up an airbase escape, so they start shooting at the boat that's trying to be lowered into the water, this, like, dinghy thing. And so the Germans open fire with their naval guns, and it just starts tearing into this boat, and one of the men of the 12 ends up being hit, and he, like, falls off the boat, and the vessel starts to sink, because it's a fishing boat, it's not meant for war, there's no armor, there's nothing to really prevent this naval gun fire from just tearing into it like Swiss cheese. It's just getting ripped apart and very quickly the boat starts to do what boats do and they start to have a ton of holes in them and just be engulfed with water and it starts to sink to the bottom. And this is Norway, so this is not some nice water that you want to be taking a swim in. No, this is freezing. Like a very good chance that if you spend more than a bare minimum amount of time in this water that you're going to get hypothermia. And on top of it, if you're one of these guys, you have to like swim out of this freezing water and then good luck running away from the Germans that are now aware that you're trying to sabotage everything. It's just a very crappy situation. So the 11 men, minus the one that sadly lost his life when the Navy boat opened fire, are now in this water, freezing, not really knowing what to do, and so the only thing that they feel like they should do is just kind of start swimming. And so they start trying to swim, but the Germans start taking their boat and dragging the men out of the water. They weren't going to let them swim away easily, and the freezing water means that they're not swimming quickly, and even if you're Michael Phelps, a boat with an engine is probably going to have an easy time catching up with you. So 10 men get pulled up out of the water. Remember, only 11 escaped. So literally one of them is left after this boat just goes from person to person, pulls them up out of the water, and executes them. Germans at this time, very, very evil. We all know the group I'm talking about. Not nice guys. Very, very bad guys. Can't say the word on YouTube. And so they just pull these guys out of the water and execute them right there. They're not going to mess around with potentially them coming back and sabotaging more things, but that leaves one person, Jan, left in this freezing water, having evaded being pulled out, knowing that he has to escape. Like, for the sake of the operation, for everyone that's died in this operation, he has to get out of here somehow so that the story can live on. And so he swims away and he ends up getting back to the beach, just barely, like, exhausted, cold, literally fighting hypothermia, and he decides that he's gotta hide, just in case the Germans come and start searching the beach or whatever. Probably a good chance they're gonna search the area. He needs to find a place to just be hidden. So he goes into this crevice over against the wall and tries to hide himself as best as human possible, but the cold is just biting at him. And so he's exhausted, he's freezing, and of course, right in that moment, he starts hearing what sounds like soldiers approaching him, searching for somebody that might have survived and swam over here. And so he ends up drawing his revolver and getting ready, and as the German soldier comes around the corner, he does what he has to do to make sure that he can get out of this situation, but that also means that he has to move. So he takes the shot with his revolver, taking care of that soldier, and then he starts trying to escape, so now he's on the run yet again. Again, and somehow he evades capture and so now the sun's going down it's dark it's freezing he's still wet it's not like it's very easy to dry yourself off and get that moisture off of you and he stumbles upon these two girls who had been in the area and had heard the explosion heard all the chaos and came to see what was going on and imagine coming to see what the booms were and like you stumble upon some dude that looks like he's literally been to hell and back because he has and he's just standing there and you're like wow I don't know what to do I could get literally executed Sorry for saying literally so much, but they could. They could die for helping this guy, and you don't know what to do. You just stumble upon him when you came to investigate a sound. But of course, 90% of all Norwegians are hating this occupation, so they decide that they're going to help him either way. So they take him back to their family, and they're helping him. And they report that he was so freezing, so cold, that his uniform was frozen solid. Like, imagine trying to walk and you can't because your shirt is so stiff because it's frozen after you 
you had to swim away from German gunfire, get onto a beach. While you're on the beach, the soldiers stumble upon you, so you have to take out a soldier. Then you're just running through the woods, dude. The, the sun goes down. You happen to just come across two people that can turn you in. Like, really, life or death situation. They happen to be kind enough, and the entire time your uniform is frozen solid and you can't move. He's already been through a lot, but could you imagine the chafing, dude? Imagine the damage that would do when you're trying to run in some frozen shorts. And he's getting this aid, and he's like, all right, well, I'm not gonna stay here for long because I'm not gonna keep putting everyone who tries to help me in danger. Like, I have to get moving so that way I don't put any more innocent people in harm's way. And the Germans at this point have realized that one of them escaped because the guy went to investigate the beach. You know, he gets shot, they find their buddy, and they're like, all right, well, he definitely escaped because we have a dead German guy here. And the person that we were chasing that we thought survived who was trying to blow up an airfield is just out there somewhere. So he becomes the subject of this massive man hunt. Basically, everywhere in Norway, they're on the hunt for this guy, this massive saboteur, who was just on his way to an airbase with eight tons of explosives. Like I said, not a baby amount. Ends up blowing up the boat. I'm sure did a ton of damage to the German vessel. Takes out a German. And they don't want this story getting out. They don't want people getting inspired. Like, the Germans weren't really doing that great at this point in the war. So the last thing they want is all of these countries realizing, oh crap, we can have a very, very effective resistance movement here. It's already hard enough to hang on to power when you're just the bad guy. You know, it's pretty obvious to everyone that you guys aren't very nice. You come in, you take over the country, you do crazy things to the people. They're not big fans. So the Germans also want to send a message and find this guy and punish him as much as humanly possible because they don't want him inspiring everybody else. And so for the next like two months, this guy is bouncing around trying to hide and just avoid the Germans as much as possible. And because he didn't want to get a lot of people impossible, he would go from like this city to that town to this area area and just tried to switch it up to make sure that they were never a catching on to him staying in one location is an easy way to get caught but on top of it he was just trying to make sure that as few people could get in trouble and potentially executed for trying to help him and so he's making his way across Norway kind of relying on the kindness of the Norwegians to make sure that he doesn't get reported or turned in or anything like that and so he ends up stumbling upon one fisherman who says look I'm gonna give you some boots I'm gonna give you some skis and that will help you cover ground a lot faster in between the villages and towns that you're going to because it is Norway it's a pretty frigid place so walking across the snow very slow if you ever tried to like trudge across some deep snow it takes a long time it's very draining if you can just slip and slide all over it like Frozone with a pair of skis that's much easier and so he's very grateful for that and so he gears up and starts trying to get these pair of skis to Sweden so that way he can escape into an allied country. And so this man is just skiing his heart out trying to escape to Sweden, relying on the kindness of the Norwegian people as he's on a way to just not snitch on him. He's like, please just don't tell on me, dude. I've been through enough. And he eventually gets to this point where he gets to the base of a mountain and he has to go over this mountain to escape. But the guy's exhausted. He's skiing. Like he doesn't have the equipment to climb this insane mountain. And so he he doesn't know what to do, but he just, like, it's his only way over to Sweden, so he starts trying to climb the mountain. And I don't know if it's just, like, the world having a cruel, cruel sense of just being mean when someone's already down, but as he's climbing this mountain exhausted, a blizzard sets in. So he literally is now climbing this ginormous mountain with cliffs and everything in the middle of a blizzard and he can't really see anything. And so he's trying to stumble his way over this mountain and he doesn't want to fall off a cliff. So he comes up with this strategy to make sure that he doesn't inadvertently walk off and plummet to his death of he was taking snow and throwing it and trying to see if he could like hear it hit the ground or not. And if he could hear it hit the ground, then obviously there wasn't a cliff there. It's landing on something. So he knew it was safe to go. So he's inching his way over this mountain in a blizzard, carrying his equipment, not prepared for this at all, you know, was planning to just go on a quick sabotage mission and get home after blowing up an airfield. Now he's on a mountain after skiing miles and miles and miles. But the world just has to kick him when he's down again because as he's climbing on this mountain an avalanche comes in and it hits him sweeps him down and ends up burying him up to his neck like he can't move literally stuck 
in this ginormous pile of snow and it's such a huge avalanche and it's so forceful that it takes his skis off they're gone who knows where they went probably in Timbuktu by now and his boots are somewhere in this snow pile and he's sitting there realizing like okay I'm stuck in this pile of snow my feet are just exposed to the ice I don't have my skis there's a very good chance that this is the end because you got to think about like how fast you would freeze in that scenario how fast you start to get frostbite how fast you have to like cut off your toes it's not a very good situation and so he starts trying to free himself as best as he can and he finally gets himself free and now he's just stumbling through all of this snow for like days and days because the blizzard didn't just come and leave in a couple hours he's just kind of stumbling through whiteout barefoot and then the snowstorm just does not let up it literally just keeps pounding and for the next week he's just stuck in the middle of this insane storm wandering around and he's trying to do his best to just brave the elements and think about this he's already survived for a week while just walking around in a blizzard completely barefoot had no preparation for this this was not something he prepared for even if you prepared for it I think the fact that you get hit by an avalanche after trying to climb a mountain and now you don't have shoes and you survive more days after that is nuts and so finally finally after the skies just relent and they stop dumping snow and wind and this cold icy just blech, all over him he's still stumbling around and now it's starting to set in that like he's kind of going crazy he's starting to see things he's starting to be like yes your majesty I did save Norway like talking to people that aren't there and on top of it he's moving a lot slower because his feet are just absolutely destroyed with frostbite the guy's just been walking around in a blizzard with no shoes no socks on for days at this point his feet are not in a good condition I'm not gonna get too into it because I want people that are eating to be able to keep watching the video but like it's not not a very good situation imagine googling something very gross and showing it to someone like that's that's basically the situation his feet are the thing you show them and I think at this point after all the bad luck that life had thrown at him they were like wow he survived the blizzard and the avalanche and then the continued blizzard all right we got to give him some good luck now because he's hallucinating he's crazy he's dehydrated he's exhausted and somehow he just stumbles into a village like literally in mid madness stumbles into this Norwegian village and he starts just banging on the doors of houses trying to be like I just need help at this point he's desperate it doesn't even matter if he knocks on the door of a German person he's just that desperate for help at this point because he's going to die soon and so he knocks on the door of this one house and the guy opens the door and he pulls him inside and is like all right what's going on kind of gets him to explain Explain the situation and he tells him yeah well you were literally about to die because the house next door has German soldiers in it so if you would have gone one more door over that would have been a quick GG but this family that had opened the door to him is like all right man we love Norway as much as you love Norway we're gonna figure out a way to get you out of here because you've already survived enough that's absolutely insane so yes like we can figure out a way to make something work where we help you get out of here and the Germans were already pretty anxious to find this guy like they were already really doing a national manhunt but at this point because he had evaded capture for so long and there were still rumors that he he was on the run he was starting to become a little bit of a legend like I was saying earlier they didn't want people to get inspired and that was exactly what was happening I mean imagine you're hearing the tale of this guy who's like barefoot running through a snowstorm and still outsmarting the entire German army yeah that's a pretty inspiring story for sure so now the Germans are super extra pissed and they are trying even harder to find him and so the family that was going to help him escape realizes that it's a little bit too hot right now to try to move him like there's just a good chance that he's going to get caught if they try to escape right now so they decide that they're going to hide them or him excuse me in their barn for a while just while things die down give the Germans a little bit to be like ah oh, he must be dead but even this change in luck doesn't change the fact that his feet are destroyed like absolutely destroyed and uh, it just becomes a reality that those toes that had been exposed to the snowstorm for so long yeah those are gonna have to go um, and I'm not talking about like to a, a pedicure place or whatever I'm talking about maybe off of your body he's got to do something to get these toes off of him because at this point it's just like rotting flesh and that's gonna lead to an infection and it would suck to survive all of this and then die because of your toe you know not that frostbite's lame like it's a very real scary thing but imagine you survive all of this and you get taken down by some frostbite so 
he decides that he's gonna cut his toes off. But he's in a barn, there's no anesthetic, there's nothing. So he gets a pocket knife, ladies and gentlemen, a pocket knife, and decides to just start cutting off toes. And in this barn, with this pocket knife, he cuts off like a big toe, he cuts off some other toes. This man just really goes Pablo Picasso on his feet, because he has to. There's nothing he can do, it's going to infect him and kill him. Which has to be the worst, like, imagining that mental battle of, I have to cut off my own toes, there's no way around it, like, I will die if I don't cut off my own toes. I, I think in that situation you have to, but goodness gracious. And so, now he's just in suffering, he's painful, he's just like, oh my my gosh, this is awful. Like, I can't believe that this is my life now. And day after day, his situation is getting worse. He's like starving, you know, he's freezing. Even though he got rid of the gangrene, he now just has like exposed nubs of where his toes were, just open wounds sitting there. And he can't really run away anymore because all of his toes are gone. And it gets worse because one day German soldiers come in and they start searching the barn. And he can't move, he can't run, he literally just has to hope they don't find him. And if they do, it's it's just over. Like, he's dead meat because he's not mobile. He doesn't have toes anymore. And so at that point, everybody is like, all right, we got to figure out a different situation. We got to figure out a way to get this guy to survive. And so they put him on this stretcher and they kind of use it as a makeshift sled. And they start pulling him through like the snow and whatnot. And it basically becomes this little village's mission to help this guy escape. Like they're recruiting people to come help him do things that they need help doing. You know, they're making special tools to help him escape. But what I think is really funny about this story, not that this is funny, like, but this last part is funny he escaped finally in the most Norwegian way you could imagine like obviously he's done all of this for the freedom of Norway he's fighting the Germans it just makes sense that he has to escape in the most Norwegian way you could ever do it and he is gamed by a, being on a sled pulled by reindeer which I thought was just a Santa Claus thing. I didn't realize Norwegians were actually up there whipping around playing Tokyo Drift with Rudolph on the front of the sled. Like, that is incredible. I love the fact that he just hopped in this sled and went on his reindeer merry way. He's been through so much at that point that he did just deserve a nice little sleigh ride. He was basically like the Santa Claus of Norway trying to deliver freedom. You know, that's, that's what's up. And this ordeal put him through a lot. He has to, like, relearn how to walk. He has to relearn how to do a ton of stuff because he's just been in survival mode for so long but it only took him six months to learn how to walk again which all things considered considering he lost almost all of his toes i think he had one left that's a pretty insane feat after just six months after something like that you're back up and rocking and even then he wasn't done like he gets back up on his feet boom bang i'm gonna get back into the war that's right after all of this having to cut off his toes with his pocket knife he's like no i'm not done i've got to keep going and so he goes back to Scotland where he originally had received all this training and he starts helping them train people. You know, he's great at training Norwegians. There's no language barrier. He can talk to them. He's literally an inspiring hero to them. And so he rides out the rest of the war helping train soldiers to go do operations like the one he was on. And so finally, after the war ends and Norway is free, after years and years of occupation, he gets to go home and it's a huge celebration. All the homies, all the family, Wow, Jan, you are so incredible, dude. You, you literally stayed 10 toes down for Norway. You are a legend, and he is a legend. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is the story of Jan. Like I said, a little different than normal. That one story took me a lot longer than I expected, so I'm gonna just do that one for now because it's a different style. If you guys like these, I could make a ton more of these, so let me know, like I said, in the comments section down below. It's similar to the story times, but a little different, so give me some feedback. I would appreciate it. Other than that, if you want to give these a listen offline, you can check out the Spotify link down below. I uh, will also go ahead and toss a link to the intro song down there too. Feel free to check it out. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's really everything. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.